What's up, everybody? This is Dwight here with Retro Crypto. Got another exciting video for you today on cryptocurrency as usual. But before we start, I want to remind you, I'm just another guy out there on the Internet who loves cryptocurrency. It is essential that you do your own research before making any and every financial decision. Now, with that said, I want you to grab, put your hand right over that mouse. All right. Now, I want you to go ahead and click on that little button that says like. It helps me out so much. YouTube will send the channel more traffic and will it'll help us grow together. Also, while you're at it, why don't you go ahead and click on subscribe and that little bell beside it and it'll be notify you whenever a new video is uploaded. All right. Now, with all that said, let's get this party started. All right, guys, I'm going to interrupt that message there that I was saying. Got to tell you a story that happened to me this week at work. It's worth listening. Don't click past it. it it's crazy. Had a co-worker, really good guy. He likes living off the grid. He's about 40. He's not dumb at all. He's a very intelligent guy. And he comes up to me. Everybody at my job knows I love cryptocurrency. And he says, hey, how do I buy some of this cryptocurrency? I want to invest. I'm like, oh, it's easy. Best way to do it is um, I like Voyager app or crypto.com app. And he was like, okay. And I was like, you have a smartphone, right? He said, yeah, I got a smartphone. I was like, all right, well, you just need an email address. And then he says, I don't have one. And I was like, you don't have an email address? He's like, nah, I don't like technology that much. And I was like, well, let's start with an email address. You got to get an email address. But that told me where cryptocurrency stands. When you start having people come out of the woodwork who would literally usually rather burn down their house than even consider using, you know, that fake money, people would like to call it. Times are changing, but um, I meant to tell this story sooner, so I decided that I just would throw it in the video at some point. <laughs> so here it is. Now, back to what I was saying. Today's video is going to be mainly, well, it's going to have some hex in it, some polka dot in it, some up, <laughs> upcoming news in it, and some information about Cardano. So it was a pretty exciting video to do, and I am looking forward to it. Now, for starters, as I always start off, because I complain about this, I can't stand liars. And one of the biggest sources for cryptocurrency enthusiasts, beginners, etc., is uh, crypto.com. I'm, I'm sorry, coinmarketcap.com. Not crypto.com, coinmarketcap.com. They are not putting the correct market caps. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that today. But let's just, I'm going to show you real quick. Now you notice the crypto bubbles here, by the way. I love the crypto bubbles. I don't really get the purpose of it but they're just so cool to sit around bounce around on your window um just like watching them bounce around i don't know like hex right here is up 12 12.3 percent i love it um all right let's keep it moving all right so right here you'll see on um, coin paprika they've been around for a while since the barrel market um very reliable they have hex in the fourth spot if you look at yahoo they have hex i believe in a number eight or number nine spot you look at nomics the original people who exposed what was going on they have Hex in a nine spot, Cardano right above it. I love Cardano. And then on crypto, coin market cap, I almost said it again. They have Hex in number 201. Absolutely ridiculous. It is shameful. Why are they lying? Just tell the public what Hex is really worth. Everybody already knows. All right. Now, moving forward from there, Hex. Hex right here is, I did a little bit of charting. I, I, I was going to show the Fibonacci retracement, but I don't really feel that fits uh hex that great so what i did was i have it just set up currently with the uh the macd rsi the uh the moving average for i mean um for moving averages i have it set for 20 50 100 and 200 and then i also had the bollinger bands going here and as you can see, we'll start back at the bottom the macd you can see currently we're on an up, upward swing. So this is showing bullish action because we crossed over from the red back on. Uh, well, actually, it was like a little bit of a tug of war throughout the eight, uh, yesterday. I mean, the 18th through like the 19th. But yesterday e afternoon, it looks like you're separated. And right now, we're just like, look, you're entered into the bullish territory with the MACD. The RSI is showing things on the higher end of overbrought. Um, and then we have the, um, like I said, 20, 50, 100, 200 day moving averages. Uh, looks like we just, ooh, that's not what I want. Oh, yeah, 20 day moving average just moved back above the 50 day. That's what you want to see. That's a nice little spread out there. That's what you want to see. You don't want to see this purple, the 20 day dropping underneath the green or 
And so yeah, it looks very healthy right now. Hex is actually on an upward swing. It, it looks, it feels very, I don't want to call it aggressive, but it definitely on a bullish side of things, especially compared to everybody else, all the other cryptos out there these days. Now, I also took and charted out a little line of resistance that has it it hit it hit a lot a spot of resistance on let's get the date November twelfth and that was right about twenty seven is twenty eight ish cents and that's where it is about to hit very soon so right here it's coming right back up to that line of resistance where it could not pass last time so hopefully it will break past that line of resistance that is going to come that. The truth will come out on that and that very soon. Um, I don't know. I'm really hoping it breaks that line of resistance, but it's hard to say. Now, I could have charted a line down from here to better, but it's coming up to that point where it's going to have to decide if it can break that line of resistance with its current action, movement action. Actually, what I could do is I will drop that trend line up there right now. It's very quick and easy to do. So, as you see right now, it's, move, it's the trend currently that is currently on. It's looking pretty good uh it's coming up to that line of resistance so as it comes up to this triangle it's going to have to make a choice and i'm hoping as long as it doesn't drop down beneath this we're good we want to see it keep going but it may break this um current moving action but we'll have to see all right all right moving on hex but in my opinion hex is looking very very strong right now and it looks like 28 to 30 cents is really what's going on predict if it can if it can break past that we're golden it's going to go up higher if not we're still golden why because it's hex and i have faith in richard hart and i'm sure you do too all right moving on oh what is that <laughs> sorry about that guys all right this is what i wanted you to see here uh big news earlier i felt it was big news i came out about nine hours ago uh actually this is more than nine hours this is off um Hex, uh, let's see what he says. Richard Hart tweeted this. Coinbase Wallet, how, I'm sorry, Coinbase Wallet, your key to the world of crypto Hex. Uh, Hex indirectly gets listed on Coinbase. Here's how you could buy it. Um, again, if you're not on Twitter, get on Twitter. All the information in the world is on Twitter. You want to be on Twitter. You want to definitely be on Telegram and Discord. Discord is a little tricky to use, but there's a ton of information on there. All right, so I took open that link up to save time for you guys. Hex directly gets list indirectly gets listed on Coinbase. Here's how you can buy it. Um, arrow down. It says step one to buy Hex, download the Coinbase wallet. Step two, choose a Coinbase wallet username. Step three, securely store your recovery phrase. Step four, understand and plan for Ethereum network fees. Step five, buy and transfer Ethereum to Coinbase wallet. Step six, use your Ethereum to buy Hex in the trade tab. So that is a major step forward. Um, let's see what this says. In Coinbase indirectly lists Hex through their Coinbase wallet. Investors can purchase a cryptocurrency through the Coinbase wallet. However, only people residing in the U.S. can purchase Hex through the wallet, and it is unavailable for trading for other countries. Wow. I'm used to it being the opposite way around. For once, it's good for U.S. citizens. That's weird. Um, I've been wanting to buy Web Mobile for a minute. Um, but I couldn't take part in that IDO, be, ICO IDO, because of the fact it wasn't in the U.S. But anyway, as I digress, let's keep it moving. All right. Next thing that uh, Richard Hart had tweeted that I found really interesting, a little confusing, but I'm going to read through it for you guys. And hope some of you guys are probably way smarter than I am. And hey, more power to you. But uh, Richard Hart tweeted this, and it is, it is exciting news, though. So, uh the, uh, you want to think uh, in Telegram, there is a group for Pulse X that Richard Hart created, and it's right there, and it is thriving and growing quickly. So you want to go there to get all the information you can. Make sure you get on Telegram so much information and Twitter. All right, but let's read what he has to say here. Uh, some game theory that will blow your mind. PulseChain.com has around 1 million X the supply of Ethereum has. Thus, the ratios of Uniswap liquidity pools need fixed a, by a bot at launch. It will buy 100 million USDC, that's a stable coin if you don't know, for just $2,500 worth of pulse. And then he goes down here to explain. By the way, the estimate of 2,500 of pulse isn't really accurate because it uses 10,000 pulse per dollar 
to guesstimate the value, but no one really knows the value of pulse launch, uh, PLS pulse launches at zero. So uh, I did do that quick math and I came out to 0 0.0001 per pulse. That's in US pennies. Um, just get an idea. Um, and as he, then he says, pulse XBOT empties nearly all ERC20 token. Uh, it's a lot of blah, blah, blah. It's all, it's, <laughs> sometimes when he's tweeting, you're like, okay, some guys are smarter than others. Long story short, buy Pulse uh, as soon as it opens. Actually, don't buy Pulse as soon as it opens because right at this point, if you didn't sacrifice, you can't buy it. I'm sorry. I'm a little excited at reading this tweet. But um, if you didn't take part in a sacrifice, you do. You can take part in a sacrifice that's upcoming, and that is for Pulse X. Pulse X, the best way I could describe that will be comparing it to Uniswap, Sushi swap, pancake swap, uh, one inch. And the list goes on and on with different DEXs. It's going to be a DEX for the Pulse chain. Um, so and then obviously when Pulse goes live, that's when everybody else can make uh, to jump on a bandwagon, just buy in when it first releases. And it'll probably be a pullback to some degree, and then it's going to take off to the moon. But that's all normal, norm, normal stuff to expect. But anyway, I just wanted to go over this tweet real quick with you from him. This tweet was a little bit confusing to me, so I'm not, I, I pulled back on explaining it because I don't want to mess you guys up. But take, make sure you take a look at it. Maybe somebody can go to comments and clarify exactly what he was trying to say with this tweet. But my gist of it is, is that, um, yeah, I'm gonna leave that alone. Uh, polka dot. Polka dot, polka dot. Everybody is sleeping on polka dot. They slept on polka dot during the bear market, and now they're sleeping on polka dot again. Now, what is going on with polka dot? All right, we see that there. It, uh, the MACD, they're pretty much playing um, thumb wars back and forth right here. They're just twisting. It, it won't go bullish or bearish. It's just <laughs> it's very tight. It's a very tight bond right there. Um, right now, they're actually falling towards. The buy window, they're more on the undersold, underboard side. You see right here, the, they're dropping down here uh, on the RSI. And the uh, EMA, the EMA is not looking very good. You got the 20 day on the very bottom, then the 50 day, then the 100, then the 200. So, yeah, according to the charts, polka dot is not looking healthy at all as far as something you want to jump in on, which means you want to buy them now. You want to buy it when it's not looking good. Don't buy it when it's like, oh, they're, they're, it's going straight up to the moon. No, you want to buy it now. Um, now, I will say that they are going to have to come to a point of decision soon. Uh, what I did was I based this off of a uh, recent low. Where is that low? That low moved up this chart. Bear with me one second here, guys. Okay, there he is. So right now, it's right now it's coming, it's really getting close in this little wedge, and it's going to have to break up or it's going to break down. Uh, it's hard to say, but the truth will come out very soon. Um, but yeah, what's going on with Polka Dot? Why I'm so excited about it is that Polka Dot Parrot Chains go live, capping years long tech build for ambitious blockchain project. Uh, Polkadot, an underlying framework for connecting various blockchains, has launched its first set of parachains individual networks running in parallel to create a harmonized and operable ecosystem. The first five parachains going live, Akala, Moonbeam, Parallel Finance, Astar, and Clover, are focused on a variety of topics from decentralized finance, DeFi, to investments and loans. Polkadot was, was conceived by Ethereum co-founder Gavin Wood, to solve inoperability, in, interoperability issues between blockchains and their variety of specific use cases. Just as the current version of the internet creates caters to different needs, blockchains need to be able to provide a variety of services, said Wood. No single blockchain design works optimally for every use case. Each chain comes with trade-offs making it good for some applications and not others, said Wood in a statement. The parachain model was created with the belief that the future Web3 will involve excuse me, many different types of blockchains working together. Parachains are able to lease a slot on, block, on Polkadot's main relay chain for up to 96 weeks at a time, 
Ultimately, Polkadot will offer 100 pair of chain slots. Further slots will be allocated in batches over the coming months. Now, all these slots will be allocated via pair of chain slot solutions act uh, auctions, as some will be uh, used for governance enabled common good pair of chains according to press release. So, everybody's been waiting for this for a year. It finally happened. Um, and then it's like, cricket, cricket, cricket. It's like mom's word, nobody's talking about it. In reality, this is huge. Now, you got to remember, you had Charles Hoskinson with Cardano, who was also a co-founder of Ethereum. And then you had Gavin Wood, who was also a co-founder of Ethereum. Charles Hoskinson and Gavin Wood both went their own separate ways to fix the problems that lied with Ethereum. Because if you remember, Ethereum was an experiment. And Vitalik Buterin still... His approach to it still is an experiment, even though it's being used with real world money and real lives and businesses are involved. So anyway, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole right now, but um, I just want to go into the who who's behind Polkadot. All right. Robert Habermeyer. Robert Habermeyer is a Theo fellow and a co-founder of Polkadot. He has a research and develop, development backgrounds in blockchains, distributed systems, and cryptography okay dr gavin wood gavin began or uh, originating blockchain technology as a co-founder and cto of ethereum need i say more uh peter zesband can't say his name sorry peter is a technology director of web3 foundation where he works on supporting development of the next generation of distributed uh technologies um that's all huge uh there was something here i wanted to show you guys about Web3. But Polkadot's website is just awesome. So I suggest you to go to their website, just start poking around, get it poking around, and looking at some stuff because um, they are going to be a huge player. I actually have a decent size position in Polkadot, and I'm actually rethinking is it enough? I may want to start dollar cost averaging into it because I currently dollar cost average every day right now into Cardano, Decentraland, and SAN. But I'm thinking Polkadot, I may want to add it to it. All right, uh, uh, Polka Starter. This is a project that's on Polkadot. It's been quiet lately. It was real big last year, um, but it's something else you want to start looking into. Polka Starter. Polka Starter is a launch, basically a launch pad for them. Um, it's a lot like Card Starter, Ocam Fee for Cardano, and there's a ton of different launch pads out there for IDEO, ICO projects, cryptocurrency projects. Um, so you want to take a peek at this. Um, but when you get involved with these, you got to make sure you know what you're buying because, I mean, anybody can create a project and have make claims, but it doesn't mean it really has anything of value. So you, you make sure you know what you're doing before you play with it. But as buying it as just one, investing just in Pokestarter, yeah, you're safe. You're good to go. Um, they are definitely on a downward swing right now. The chart does not look healthy at all. Which means it is an excellent buy opportunity. So put that in your radar. All right, guys. Uh, now jumping forward here. All right, this is just a quick view of the polka dot ecosystem. It's huge. Um, and if you look closely at it, it reminds me a lot of Cardano's ecosystem, just the way that it's grown. Um, but yeah, I, I, it took me a little while to find a picture I really liked of this. But yeah, this is a good one. All right, but I want you guys to do your own research into polka dot. All right, moving on. Cardano, Cardano, Cardano. Oh, I love Cardano. But, man, this chart looks like, it looks horrible. But, you know, who knows? It, I know, I, not who knows. I know it, eventually it's going to explode. I just have to be patient. Patience is key with cryptocurrency. And you see how tight this is. Um, yeah, you just got to be patient. It's going to make a huge comeback. Uh, yeah, Cardano looks horrible right now. <laughs> it looks very boring. Um, but, yeah, yeah, there's not much I can say about that one. I'm just going to move on. Buy Cardano. You will not regret it. But right now, there's nothing to brag about. All I can say, it looks like an excellent opportunity to dollar cost average and to get in when the market's down. You don't want to get in when the market's all the way up here. That's what people do. And that's going to be the mistake. You want to get in when it doesn't look good, when it's down here. That's where the profit is. All right. Also, oh, everybody on Cardano is waiting for a Sunday swap. I don't know what it is about cryptocurrency. I don't know if it's just human nature or what, but everybody is so hell bent on waiting for Sunday Swap. I know Sunday Swap is going to be the most awesomest thing since sliced bread, I guess. But 
Mule Swap just did a tweet. We reached fifty thousand now as the first contract. Uh, as the first contractor on Cardano Mainnet at fifty thousand. <sighs> Mule Swap is up and running. Nobody's usually swapped. Nobody's really talking about it. Um, you guys need to start paying more attention to Musely Swap. Everybody's sidetracked with Sunny Swap, and you're not thinking about the a DEX that's currently up and running now on Cardano. I don't know how else to express it, but look into it. Because right now there is Web Mobile. I want to buy some Web Mobile. The only reason I did not buy it on Musely Swap is I don't have an exchange giving an accurate price of Web Mobile. The second I get an actual valuation of that project, I'm buying it. I wish I could have brought it sooner. But I'm not sure if Musly Swap is in my favor or not. But anyway, moving forward. Uh, let's see what else. Oh, Sunday Swap, as usual. They keep releasing. Oh, we have this done. Oh, we've partnered with this company, this and that. But I'm just, I'm, I'm ready. Sunday Swap, where are you? It's killing me. But now one thing that I am going to do to make sure I'm not a hypocrite is probably today I'm going to be um, staking with Capital Ventures Stake Pool. Um, up to now, I've been with Ray Network. Half of my Cardano has been with Ray Network, but I'm about to go all in because I think Sunday Swap is getting pretty damn close. All right. And what was this one? Okay. Last thing but not least, why do I think the market's down significantly right now? Right now, since I've been doing this since December 19th, 2017. So 2018 was the first time I truly witnessed it. Uh, and in 2018, uh, the December, uh, everybody just starts selling off. You start selling off before the end of the year. And what it is, is everybody's trying to uh, sell. It's just like stocks. Everybody's trying to get rid of everything that um, hasn't been as profitable as they thought it would be. Or they're actually at a straight up loss. And they want to take the loss and put it against their capital gains to bring down their taxes. Speaking of that, I need to do that my days off coming up. Um, let me read this to you real quick. Why tax season may be adding to the route in Bitcoin cryptocurrencies. Starting in 2022, the Internal Revenue Services, IRS, is expected to shut down a long-time tax loophole that allows cryptocurrency investors to harvest their losses to offset their tax burden. Digital coins already under heavy selling pressure as the holidays approach are getting hit by wealthy investors fearing a tighter tax regime next year. The shrinking loophole could be making matters worse. Following a relief rally after a Federal Reserve policy decision, cryptocurrencies have been hammered along with stocks as Omicron, Omicron variant fears grip markets again. While short-term volatility has come to define crypto trading, your end tax positioning may also be playing a role. Buying high and selling low is an ideal investing strategy, but with crypto, there is a silver lining. Savvy veterans can reap advantages on their tax returns by selling their crypto at a loss, then buying it back shortly thereafter. Bingo, bam, oh, boom. I'm sure that we all have things in our uh, portfolio that we're like, we took a loss, so it was a gamble. We took a loss. We still believe in it. So here you go. Say it's down 30%, 40%. Okay, I'll sell it. I'll claim that loss. Now I'll buy it right back. So I want you guys to think about that. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory. Now, with that said, yeah, I'm going to go and wrap up this video here. Um, you have any questions, comments, statements, please leave it in the, uh, leave it in the comments. I appreciate it so much. And YouTube will send me more traffic because of it. Also hit that like button and also subscribe and until next time. Stay happy, stay blessed. And most of all, stay profitable.